Okay, a couple of quick final notes in terms of uh, web design and your final uh, weekly uh, project here as well as your m module portfolio piece. Something that you need to take note, and I'm going to maximize my screen here so it looks okay that this image is, is sitting there, but notice that it's actually sitting beyond the div box that's here. And that is something that will cause your page to look weird. So if I go ahead and go out to a preview here and bring that on up, notice how it breaks out of the wrapper and the and the mold and that's because it's just too big to sit in there correctly so to accommodate for that and you really should we're gonna have to make this image this div box larger once again I've clicked on it and I can see from down below that it's the right banner and <clears throat> I'm gonna scroll down find that right banner and I'm gonna make that 450 pixels wide and that should accommodate it. Now if you need to make this particular box, which is the left banner, if you need to make that smaller, and I would probably go ahead and do that, especially if you don't have a whole lot in it, um, you can do that. So that's one thing to save or to, to deal with. Notice here that I have put in a background, I've put in a color for the wrapper area. I've also colorized my hyperlinks accordingly and just as a re quick review of that I'm going to go to right click and page properties and I'm going to come to links here I'm going to actually not change anything on my hyperlinks because I want to keep them the same as the page font and the same size I'm just going to go ahead and change their link colors the default is is blue which is fine if you had a white page but you wouldn't be able to really see it very well on here note that I've already done that and of course some of the other things I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, make sure that everything is following on a font sample or a font design that I've already gone ahead and, and set up in my uh, properties. Now one of the things that you're seeing here again is that because I've shrunk my window down for recording purposes you see it look as if it has broken the uh, design. It really hasn't. When you go up to a full screen it's fine. So if I move this viewing point around you can see that indeed it's fine and that's the way I would expect it to be online if somebody were to look at it there. Now one of the other things, and this is the last thing that I would like to deal with here, and this is something that actually drives me a little crazy, so I would hope that you could accommodate me on this. I don't like designs that have text slamming right up against the edges of a design element, such as this particular portfolio here. So that in this particular case, I would want to provide some sort of buffer between this outer wall here and the edges of my background and I would ask that if you've got either off of your portfolio or your instructional design menu that you go ahead and do this as well actually let me bring that back down to make sure you can see what I'm talking about here once again I've got text that's slamming right up against the edges of the box here, here, and in and, and a few other places. Now, there's a couple of approaches that I can take to resolve this. What I want to do, though, is I want to determine what's my larger container here because I could probably fix it at that particular level, and that is the div wrapper. I could go in and specify on every one of these little divs that it should include some padding in it, and I could do that across the board and that would take care of it so I could go into my uh, footer area I could go into this particular div and again I could specify a piece of padding on all of them but I'm thinking that if I go to my wrapper which is my larger module my larger block here then I should be able to um, hit everything in one shot now one of the things I want you to pay attention to in your CSS over here on the right hand side is your larger elements should be floated to the top so if in fact your wrapper is floated down here to the bottom where it probably is floated there go ahead and click and drag it 
towards the top, I would drag it right after the body. Simply from a logic standpoint of code, this is your universal selector, this is your body, your page defaults, and then this is your wrapper, which is this first box here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to click on that wrapper and go into my pencil, go over to my box, and I don't necessarily think I need padding for everything, although I could certainly get away with doing it for everything. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to say 10 pixels for everything and apply it. And notice immediately that my design has done what I want it to do, which is to clean up that, uh, that portion where it's slamming right up against the edge there. So that would make that look much better. I'm going to go ahead and preview it. And here it is in preview. And you can see that A, it's not slamming right up against it. I might even suggest I might need to go a little bit further in than 10. Um, but keep in mind that once you start squeezing things in in terms of padding, we're fine in terms of how big this box is and how big this box is. You'd be able to do a lot of padding on both the left and right margins. But keep in mind that if you did too much padding, then you could essentially break your box to the point where it would have to start scrolling down below your other content. So just be aware of that. And if you guys can go ahead and finish up your designs this week in terms of your instructional design menu as well as your final portfolio. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.